Joining us now, former CDC director, Dr. Tom Frieden. Doctor, where are we with this virus now? Are we past the peak? And your predecessor in the job, the current CDC director, Dr. Robert Redfield, tweeted this on Friday. Based on 12 different forecasting models, we will see deaths exceeding 100,000 by June 1. That's just two weeks from now. What do you think? Well, I said the same thing about uh, two weeks ago in my testimony in Congress. Tragically, this is a really bad virus, and we are just at the beginning. We're in different places in different parts of the country. In New York City, where I am today and where I live, we are at the end of the beginning. In some other p places of the country, it hasn't yet hit in full force. The bottom line, Chris, is that the safer we start, the sooner we can reopen our economy. We start safer, we reopen sooner. You say we're just at the beginning, but people are already talking about a second wave, either next fall or next winter. Dr. Rick Wright, who was one of the administration's top experts on vaccines, uh, who has been moved out of that job and uh, is now a whistleblower, he testified about the second wave this week. Take a look. There will be likely a resurgence of COVID-19 this fall. It will be greatly compounded by the challenges of seasonal influenza. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Dr. Frieden, is Rick Bright correct? No one can predict with certainty what's going to happen with this virus. It's a new virus. We think it may spread a little bit less in warmer weather. That could help us. But I think it's not right to think of a second wave. Unfortunately, we're likely to see multiple waves in different parts of the country. We know that this can spread explosively if it gets out of control. That's why we have to be so careful. We're all tired of waiting at home. We want to get out. I want to get back to the gym. We want to get back to our lives. We want to get our economy back. But at the same time, if we go too fast, it will backfire and we can see explosive spread that could bring us back in. Fundamentally, it's not just the lockdowns that are keeping us at home. It's the virus. The virus is the enemy here. And, you know, Chris, Yogi Berra said, if people don't want to go to the ballpark, how are you going to stop them? If people aren't feeling safe going out, they're not going to go to dine, to eat, to shop, to do other things. That's why it's so important that to get our economy back soon, we start safe. Well, you say start safe. Uh, as we just said, 48 states have reopened to some degree, some businesses, some parks and beaches. Do you think we're moving too soon to reopen? Out of doors is great. There's a very, very low risk of spread out of doors. So by all means, go out, take a walk, bicycle, enjoy nature. It's good for you. It's good for your health. And there's some businesses that are essential, and there's some businesses that can start with minimal risk. There are other things that are going to be harder to do without, um, without a lot of safety measures. So we're going to see not shaking hands for a while. We're going to see using hand sanitizer a lot. Uh, we're going to see face masks where it's spreading widely, where you're within six feet of someone, especially if you're indoors. There are things that we can do so that we start this safer. Doesn't mean you have to stay home forever. Does mean we have to be careful because if you get the virus, it's not just about you getting sick. You could, without feeling sick, spread it to your neighbor's kid who has leukemia and they could get deathly ill. We're all in this together. We're fighting a virus that is a really difficult enemy to fight and it's still out there it's going to be there the more we're safe from this virus actually the more we'll be safe from flu as well those things we do to physically distance those are going to cut down our flu level as well and if everybody gets a flu vaccine this fall that'll be helpful too just keep in mind this is a lot worse than the flu this is 10 times deadlier it spreads much more readily it's more likely to kill you and we don't have any immunity naturally and we don't yet have a vaccine well, I, I want to pick up on this question of where we are in the virus and, and the question of reopening, because we heard two very different arguments this week from President Trump and from Dr. Anthony Fauci. Here they are. There is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control. Look, he wants to play all sides of the equation. Uh, I want to point to a specific state, because there was a lot of criticism when Georgia and its governor, Brian Kemp, 
reopened a few weeks ago, and they reopened salons and gyms, even got criticism from President Trump that he was moving too fast. But we have not seen the kind of spike that was widely feared with that reopening in Georgia, which raises the question, are some public health experts, I'll include you in that, are you being too alarmist about this? I don't think you can be uh, too alarmist about what this virus can do. Look at New York City over the past two months. More than 20,000 deaths from this virus. It's really been catastrophic. But it is important to recognize that there are things we can do to go out more safely. And I have friends in Georgia still, and they describe to me physical distancing in shops, people being very careful. That's important. Also, keep in mind, the virus mutates, it changes, it evolves, but fundamentally, when it begins to spread again, you won't see that for a few weeks, because it takes about a week to get sick, another week to get very sick, and then you make other people sick. So once there is the resumption of spread, you might not see that for a month or two. There's a lag here. Uh, on Friday, as we reported, President Trump announced Operation Warp Speed, an effort to marshal the government, private uh, companies, the military to develop a vaccine and 200 million doses by the end of this year. How realistic is that? 200 million doses of a proved safe vaccine by the end of the year? Well, it is absolutely the right thing to do to pull out all the stops to try to make a safe and effective vaccine. And we all hope will be available as soon as possible. Just keep in mind, vaccine is complicated. You have to prove it's safe. You have to prove it's effective. You have to make huge quantities. You have to figure out the dose. Is it one dose or two? How much of it? You have to figure out who gets it first. Healthcare workers would be first in line. And you've got to get it out there and explain to people what it is, monitor to see if there are adverse reactions. So absolutely, a vaccine is the single most important weapon we could develop against this virus, but we don't have one yet. We hope we will. We hope it'll be soon, but we cannot count on it. That's why we need to get used to the fact that the virus is here for a while. We're going to change what we do so that we can restart our economy and our society as soon and safely as possible. Well, I want to pick up on that because the president said while he's pushing for a vaccine, the country is coming back regardless. Take a look. You know, it's not solely vaccine-based. Other things have never had a vaccine, and they go away. I just want to make something clear. It's very important. Vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. Can COVID-19 just go away, as the president says? And how back to normal? Back to normal. I understand we can reopen some, but how back to normal can we get without a vaccine? Um, it's unlikely that the, va that the virus would simply disappear. Uh, that would be unusual based on what we've seen in 200 countries around the world. But we don't know how it'll behave over the summer. We don't know how long it will persist and what will happen with it. No one can predict with certainty. But one thing that is highly likely is that we will be coming to a new normal. Things will be different. We won't be shaking hands for a while. We'll be using lots of hand sanitizer. We'll be safe whenever we can be. Our health care system needs to get a lot safer, not just for COVID, but for other infections as well. We'll be traveling less. We're going to see uh, challenges with different countries not letting people in or having quarantine teens, and we're likely to continue to have outbreaks in places like nursing homes, which are, as I said more than two months ago, ground zero for this. We're going to see, unfortunately, thousands of deaths, but we can save a lot of lives if we focus on being in this together. There is only one enemy here, Chris. It's the virus. We're all in it together. And the more we're safe, the more we work together. It's not about economy versus health. If people are poor, they're less likely to be healthy. And unless we control the virus, we're not going to get our economy back. So we're in it together against Dr. the virus. Fried Dr. Frieden, I got about a minute left and I got a final question. As far back as I can remember, the CDC has always been the lead agency in health crises like this. I remember when you were there and there were various pandemics, Ebola, things like that, I would be talking to you uh, as the lead person uh, for the CDC and the lead person for the administration. 
This time, it seems like the CDC has been sidelined uh, to some degree. They have not had a public briefing in more than two months. One, do you agree that the CDC, that its role has been diminished, and do you think that is reasonable, or do you think that's a mistake? I will personally feel safer when CDC is speaking regularly to the American people. They are the world's experts in this. No other doctor, no other agency in the U.S. government has the depth and breadth of expertise of CDC. They continue to do great work, and in fact, Americans are voting with their clicks. There have been more than 1.2 billion clicks on the CDC website, and it's still the best place to go for objective information, advice, recommendations on how to protect yourself, your family, your community. So, so uh, I hope we'll be hearing more so from the CDC. Briefly, so br very briefly, do you think it's been a mistake for this administration to sideline the CDC? I think fighting this pandemic without the CDC is like fighting with one arm tied behind your back. That's brief and direct. Dr. Frieden, thank you. Thanks for your time. Always good to talk with you, sir, and please stay safe.